Okay, silence Seven, in the studio. Six, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Here at CBJ, we, as part of our course, the backbone of our course, is to run news days, that's TV broadcast news days, in which students work as a team to create a TV news programme using the fabulous facilities that we have here. We want them to feel as though they're in a, a real environment. So when they walk in, generally, in the space that we've created, we know that they're going to feel like they're in an actual production space, rather than it just being a simulation. We had some studio cameras which uh, served us very well. We've been using for probably almost 10 years, I would say. They were reaching end of life. Um, we needed to look for something else to replace them. So we were already at that point of needing to research what could we replace them with. We've got a, an existing production workflow with the TriCaster 8000 that we've had for several years um, and everything really is built around that. What we needed to do was not disrupt any of that process. Um, so it's quite important to us that we didn't encounter any significant issues when we were changing over. Um, we did look at lots of options, lots of systems, some wonderful equipment that is you know, specifically designed for TV studio use but it was simply out, out of our budget. So when the OSA broadcast came along, which was around about that time, um, we managed to figure out that we could actually get the four camera channels that we needed um, for around about the budget that we got. The fact that the broadcast version of the OSA came out meant that we could look at B4 lenses, and we went with Fujin on uh, in the end, uh, and they've been fantastic. Um, the lens control through the body was excellent. As soon as we saw the fibre interfaces, and the, particularly the fibre back for the, uh, the, the camera fibre unit for the body, it instantly turned that body into a, what I would recognise as a, as a TV studio camera. And the studio fibre interface which we have in the control room obviously gives us sort of a preview of the camera image and control from that end as well. We have prompter hoods and auto cue prompting monitors on the front of the camera rigs in the studio. Uh, we knew we got DTAP on the uh, subbroadcast body um, and we managed to power the LED panel and uh, an SDI to HDMI converter from the DTAP um, and we were sending the prompting um, image down through the studio fibre converter um, through one of the returns uh, to the camera body. What I love is the modularity of it and knowing that we can have fibre backs attached, that we can have purpose-built um, viewfinders that are all designed and they are synchronously designed by the, the creators so that we know that we can pull a single unit off the shelf and it will work in exactly the same way. There is a lot of functionality of the cameras that from an EFB perspective in the future will really benefit the department because the cameras not only function within the studio environment that can go further and can do so much more this is the kind of thing that we're excited us more than other equipment because we could see that it had so much more potential than what we could use it for just now. There's a huge difference in quality. I mean, in reality, the Versa broadcasts obviously have got a very modern sensor. Uh, we've got much better glass on the front. So um, even from our point of view, working in HD, the image quality is significantly improved. One of the things we didn't have on the previous system, which was uh, partly down to cost really when we first put that, the old system in, uh, there was no racking. We didn't have any camera control in the gallery at all. We did know that when we changed the camera system, we absolutely wanted to be able to add some camera control. And so we've got the ATEM software available and an ATEM control panel, which we're going to be using. Um, so that's something that very much was a future-proofing option for us that was, that was nice to have looking forward into the future um, obviously we have HD glass on 4k compatible cameras and 4k compatible installations so it's always been kind of a focus to say that once the budget allows that we'll move into a 4k environment so that we can demonstrate to students that this will be industry standard and they will be aware and also involved in cutting-edge technologies that they'll be able to use in interviews so that when they go off into industry they can be saying oh I've used something like this but it does this more and hopefully that kind of that's the point that we want to move them to because a lot of them go into kind of local news and smaller news outfits who have less of a budget but also that then they can be influenced by knowing that the students have been aware of using equipment that's probably bigger and kind of more exciting. <laughs>